Hey everybody, welcome back to Web Inspect. I am Timothy Miller, your host. We are officially back. I apologize for my absence over the last couple of weeks. I got pretty badly sick. Everyone in this area has been getting the flu and it finally caught up to me. So, but I'm feeling better now. I'm ready to start producing things again, ready to start creating things again. And I've also been thinking for the last two weeks about how I can up the production values around here. So that's, I've got some, I've got some things in the works. That's kind of why you see this new um, backdrop coming up behind me. But because this is not like my full-time thing, um, it's going to take me a little bit to get all the pieces in place. So kind of bear with me through that if you can. We're going to, I'm going to focus on trying to make really good content first and everything else is going to hopefully kind of come along with that content as we as we continue to move forward. I've also been getting a lot of comments lately, um, just really helpful feedback. And I want to thank you guys for any sort of constructive comments that you give me. I've also been getting a lot of ideas from you guys. And I want to shout out to Kirk today because today's video is an idea that he gave me. And that is today we are going to talk about encrypted Git repositories in Keybase. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, we've talked about this briefly in past Keybase videos, but we've never really taken a deep dive into it. Keybase has encrypted Git repositories. So I'm sure a lot of you know of or have used private Git repositories in the past, maybe on GitHub, maybe on Bitbucket, there are maybe on GitLab, there are all sorts of different solutions for private Git repositories. But the thing is, the thing about GitHub and the thing about Bitbucket is their private repositories are stored in plain text. And you create your repository, you push it up to the cloud, everything you push up there is in plain text. Sure, it's behind your login screen, and you have to log in to be able to access that code, but it's still stored there in plain text. And here's the thing about the cloud, guys. You can never really delete anything when it comes to the cloud. I mean, you can, but you can't really trust that it will be removed everywhere because the cloud is more often than not dozens of servers and your code could be split up across dozens or even hundreds of servers and it's just really really difficult to make sure that if you delete something it is deleted across all of those servers it's virtually impossible for you and me to check that here's the thing you have a private git repository on github you delete that git repository because you're done with it and it's probably still on their servers somewhere it's probably been backed up somewhere and there's always going to be a copy of that code, even though you've deleted it. And it's stored just in plain text. So if anyone manages to hack into GitHub servers and, and get a copy of their backups, then they're going to have a copy of this repository that you thought was gone. And it's just going to be in plain text. Keybase doesn't solve that problem per se. There's always going to be a risk to storing anything in the cloud. That's just how it goes. But when you create an encrypted Git repository and you store that in the cloud, then if anyone manages to gain access to your code base somewhere down the line, then they won't be able to make sense of it because it's all encrypted. The only way they would be able to access that code is if they had access to your computer so that they could use your private key to de-encrypt that code base. So it's much less likely that malicious people will be able to see or use anything that you put in an encrypted Git repository than putting it in a GitHub private repository. I'm not saying you shouldn't use Git private repositories. They still have a really good place and they still are secure enough for a lot of things. But if you want something to be really secure and if you want it to be a Git repository, you should use Keybase Git. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And one of the coolest things about using encrypted Git repositories with Keybase is you really don't have to do much more than you've already done. Let me show you how easy it is to get started with this. As you can see, I've got some repositories here already. And creating a new one is as easy as clicking new personal repository, giving it a name, and clicking create. Keybase will think for a minute, then it'll create a new repository for you. Now, the thing is, how do we access this, right? How do we put things inside this test repository? And I'm going to show you how to do that. You can't do it from the Keybase interface. Keybase currently doesn't have any way for you to actually interact with these rep repositories. As you can see, I've got a passwords repository here. If I click on it, it doesn't show you any files. It doesn't show you what this contains. All it shows you is the, the URL. It gives you the option to delete it and it tells you the last action that happened to this repository. And this is where Git takes over. 
because Keybase in the background when you installed it, it actually also installed a Git helper utility. And this helper utility essentially checks for this Keybase protocol. You can see this URL. It looks a little bit different than most URLs. It starts with Keybase. And Git is going to check for that Keybase URL. And if it finds this Keybase protocol, then it will treat it like a Keybase repository, which means it will actually handle the encryption and the decryption in the background without you having to do anything. It's very good for security neophytes such as myself, who I don't necessarily want to like dig into the details of making things secure. I don't really enjoy making things secure, but I enjoy things being secure. And this just separates all the security stuff out, helps me not to have to think about that at all, but it still gives me very good security features. So here we go. We copy this URL, Keybase private Haldemiller test. And then from here, from here, Git takes over, like I said. So if we go to our desktop and we say Git clone and we paste that URL in there, and it tells me I cloned an empty repository. Now that's because we created the repository, but by default creating it, it doesn't have anything in it. But as you can see up here, we have a folder called test. Now I opened this folder in sublime text here. You can see I've got the folder called test. Now I'm just gonna add a readme file to this folder just like you would if you had a repository on GitHub. So readme, this is a file. Save that to my test folder that's here on my desktop. I'll call it readme.md. So now we've got a folder, we've got a markdown file. Now if we go back to, now if we go back to iTerm and we change directory into the test folder, we can do a git status and you can see we've got that readme file in our git directory. From here, we can just use regular git commands. So we can do git add all. If we do git status again, you can see it's been added. And then we can, we can do a commit. So commit is committing to the code in your repository. It's saving this version of your code base. So I can do git commit and I include a message, which is initial commit. So all of this looks right. All of this looks like a git commit should look. Now if we do another git status, everything looks green, everything looks good to go. So now we can do a git push and it will do all of the key based stuff in the background again. So what's happening in the background, what you're not seeing is it's actually encrypting that file. It's encrypting the file name. It's encrypting the branch name. Everything about this Git repository is being encrypted before it's pushed to the cloud. And then if I were to sign into Keybase on another computer and clone this again, it's going to pull down those encrypted files and use my private key to decrypt those files on my computer. All of that happens in the background. You don't see any of that. You don't have to mess with any of that, but you have the peace of mind of knowing that all of this information is encrypted before it ever touches the server. Now, I know this command line stuff is a little intimidating. I know a lot of you have not used Git on the command line all that much, and Keybase really doesn't give you much in, in the way of a visual interface or any sort of tools to help you do the Git parts of this. So, and there are a number of tools that you can use that will help you with that. Um, GitHub makes a really good one. Another one that I have used in the past is called SourceTree, and I've got it pulled up here. This is SourceTree, and this is actually a, another repository. It's an encrypted repository I keep in Keybase. It's this writing one right here. And as you can see, you can still use this visual interface, even though it's encrypted on the server, all of the files are de-encrypted for your computer. So any tool like this will actually work just fine. I did encounter a problem as I was preparing for this video. I tried using source tree and the push and pull was not working. It said it couldn't find the Keybase Git utility. And it turns out that's because source tree was using the wrong version of Git on my system. So I had to do a little bit of extra work to do that. Let me show you. I found this issue on the Keybase repository. So Keybase has this Keybase issues repository. It has a lot of issues that people have submitted. Some of them are good issues, some of them are not. But this is a good place to look and search if you're having trouble with anything when it comes to Keybase. I looked here for source tree not working and I immediately found this thread of people talking about this. And this last comment here by Rand Arnold 
his fix worked for me. Um, this fixed the push pull problem. So I'll walk you through this real quick in case you're on a Mac and push pull is not working on source tree. I will show you how to do this really quickly. So he's got this command, which is to create a sim link here. So if you just copy this command and I'll, I'll post a link to this issue in the description below, but you just paste this into your terminal like that. And mine already exists. So it's going to fail. It's going to, because it, it's not going to recreate a file that already exists there, but that should succeed for you. And then if you go to source tree, you go to preferences, go to Git, and you click use system Git here and you choose this Git file that's in your local bin. So user bin, oh, this is actually not the right one. So user, then you go local bin, and then you choose the Git file right there. And so then it will use that sim link. I'm not entirely sure why this fixes it, but it does seem to fix it. And then you are able to pull and push using source tree and everything works together. So guys, there's a little bit about using an encrypted Git repository in Keybase. It's a really, really useful thing to have in your tool belt just in case you need it. I tend to prefer working in public, so I use GitHub a lot for public repositories. But when you need something that you absolutely do not want anyone else to see, like a Git repository full of passwords, for instance, then an encrypted Git repository using Keybase is certainly the way to go. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you are confused about anything we talked about, if you want a little more of an introduction to using Git, then just let me know in the, in the comments and I'll make future videos to talk more about this and other Git related things. We'll be back next week with three videos a week about Keybase and other things having to do with web development. If you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up. And guys, remember that programming is difficult. It's hard to understand all this stuff. There's way too much to talk about and to learn when it comes to this stuff. But I know you can do it. You've got what it takes. Never stop learning. Bye.